Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service at Earl Street Baptist Church. We are happy that you have chosen to share this special evening with us. By way of announcement, we will not have Wednesday night activities this week, but we invite you back next Sunday, December 30th, for a special morning of fellowship and worship. We will not have Sunday school or a 915 worship service. Instead, at 915, we will gather together for breakfast in the fellowship hall. If you would like to attend, please bring some food to share. There will not be a meal provided, so it's up to us to bring the food. Uh, then at 1030 that morning, some of our college students and other young adults will lead us in worship. It's going to be a special morning, so please come join us if you can. As an added incentive to attend, everyone is encouraged to dress in, make sure I get this right, comfortable, casual clothes that morning. Stephen says make sure it's one level up from pajamas. Uh, so if you are on the fence, there's a great reason to come. Uh, we hope to see you here. For our service tonight, the light for the Christ candle comes from the peace light, which originates in the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. And that light journeys across the world as a continuous flame to us here tonight. And we give special thanks to our Boy Scout troop. They have maintained the flame since it arrived here in Greenville for us to use tonight. So thank you, Boy Scouts, for that. And now a few words of instruction about the service tonight. <clears throat> we are also streaming the service in the fellowship hall. And during communion, both here in the sanctuary and in the fellowship hall, you are invited to come down the inside aisles during communion and take a piece of bread, dip it in the cup, partake of it, and then return to your seat by way of the outside aisles. For those of you in the sanctuary, please wait until the choir is served before coming forward. Our communion table is an open table, and all Christians are invited to participate. If you are unable to come forward, after everyone is served, please raise your hand and we will be glad to bring communion to you. Following communion, we will be lighting candles and we ask that the person with the unlit candle tip to the person with the lit candle so that we may share the light of Christ but not the burning wax. Uh, after the service, as you leave, please place the extinguished candles in the receptacles provided at the doors, both here in the sanctuary and in the fellowship hall. If you are here with children K-5 and under, we have a fully staffed nursery with planned age-appropriate activities that your preschoolers will, will enjoy. During the prelude, you are invited to bring your children to the front, and one of our ushers will be glad to escort you and your children to the nursery. And now, as we conclude our announcements, please take this opportunity to silence your mobile devices as we prepare to meet together with God and worship on this special night.
Please join me in our call to worship. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Glorious God, like the sudden brilliance of the star shining into sleepy shepherds' eyes, you bring us surprising light in the darkness. How silently, how silently. The wondrous gift is given. So that we may share the gift of Christ to all the world. Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown. When thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. There is room in my heart for Let us pray. O oh God of love, you have brought us together tonight and blessed us with your very self. Tonight we remember the holy night when you humbled yourself and became one of us so that we may be reconciled to you and to each other. We thank you for your indescribable gift of Jesus. We pray tonight for our brothers and sisters around the world who are also celebrating the good news of your incarnation. We thank you for the church and for your kingdom, which transcends our differences and divisions. We pray for those who are persecuted for your name's sake and who are worshiping tonight in fear and seclusion. Please give them strength and protection. We pray for those who are spending this night alone or hungry or cold. Please give them shelter and nourishment. We pray for those who are anxious or depressed or ill. Please give them peace and healing. We pray for those who are grieving tonight because they are spending Christmas without someone they love. Please give them hope and comfort. Please let us not take for granted how blessed we are to be right here, right now, with each other and with you. Open our eyes to the light of Christ which glows in the darkness of a world lost in apathy, pain, and loss, a world separated from you. Speak to us now that we may hear the good news of your salvation. Bring us into the wonder of your presence. Fill us with your light so that we may carry it with us outside these walls and light up the world with the love of Christ. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O oh God, for the sake of the one who was born in humility, who died a criminal's death, who defeated death by rising again, and who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen.
my mother was a Sunday school teacher for over 50 years and every week she would study her Sunday school lesson preparing to teach each week and when it would be the Saturday night before Christmas my mother would be in there diligently studying and my daddy would say what are you doing and she would say I'm studying my Sunday school lesson and he would say, don't you know that Christmas story by now? You've been teaching it for 50 years. And she said, well, Harry, every time you read the Christmas story, you get something new out of it. And Daddy said, I don't. It's the same old story. Shepherds, the wise men, Mary and Joseph. I grew up in the space between my parents, and both of them were right. It is the same old story, but every time we read it, we hear it in a new way. So tonight I invite you to listen for a word from God as I read that familiar story from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be taxed. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
to love one another his law his love and his gospel is peace chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name, Christ is Tom Long tells the story of a Christmas pageant at a small church in which the innkeeper in Bethlehem was played by a high school student. He was a quiet, polite boy, but somewhat awkward in manner, awkward in social relationships, <clears throat> even awkward in size, his growing frame always pushing the limits of his clothing. His peers liked him well enough and he was a nice enough guy, but he was just the kind of person who was easy to overlook, easy to exclude from the center of things. But he was the innkeeper in this play, and he really got into his part. So when Joseph and Mary appeared at the inn, he stood awkwardly in the doorway, slumping a bit toward the couple as they made their request for lodging. And then he dutifully recited his one line, 
There is no room in the inn. But as Mary and Joseph turned and walked wearily away toward the cattle stall where they would spend the night, the boy continued to watch them with eyes filled with compassion. And suddenly getting swept up into this moment and responding to a grace, though not part of the script, he startled himself and the holy couple and the audience when he blurted out, wait a minute, you can have my room. <clears throat> I like that innkeeper. I like that innkeeper a whole lot more than the one who is usually portrayed in our Christmas pageants. You know, the one who is usually portrayed as this gruff, rude, inhospitable businessman <clears throat> who was trying to run a business and maximize profits by making room for the guests who could afford to pay top dollar for lodging. We assume that because of the census that was taking place, the city of Bethlehem was crowded with others who had come to register for the census and with officials and soldiers of the Roman Empire who were charged with the responsibility of taking the census and then keeping order in the town. At worst, this innkeeper could have been price gouging. And at best, he would have just thought that it was fair to have a first come, first serve policy. But some people do not realize that despite all the Christmas pageants we have seen, there was no innkeeper named in Luke's story of Jesus' birth. Just a statement that there was no room in the inn. But since there was no innkeeper per se in the story, maybe that creates some space for us in this story. Since there was no actual innkeeper mentioned, maybe tonight for just a moment we can see ourselves as the innkeepers. And if you think about it, it will not take too much imagination because every day whether we know it or not, we are deciding how much room there is for Jesus in our lives. Every day we are deciding if we are going to make plenty of room for him, if we are going to squeeze him in, or if we are going to make any room for him at all. If he is going to be on a first come, first served basis, or if we will just put him in a stable somewhere, out of sight, out of mind. From the very beginning of Jesus' earthly life, there was no room for him. And in all the centuries since then, not too much has changed. It seems there is no more room for Jesus now than there was then. And irony of all ironies, there is less room at Christmas time than at any other time. Somehow we have managed to crowd Jesus out of the very season which bears his name. And sadly, it is not just at Christmas time. To make room for Jesus is to order our lives around him, it is to live the way he taught us to live. It is to love the way he taught us to love. It is to serve the way he served. It is to forgive the way he forgave. To make room for Jesus is to make room for him in our relationships. That we do unto others as we would have them do unto us. To make room for Jesus is to make room for him in our schedules. Seeking first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness so that other things in our lives will take their proper places. To make room for Jesus is to make room for him in our finances, not storing up for ourselves treasures on earth, but treasures in heaven. To make room for Jesus is to make room for him in our politics, letting the spirit of Christ determine how we vote and in age in public discourse, not blind party loyalty. 
rendering unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. To make room for Jesus is to make room for him in every dimension of our lives. To make room for Jesus is to make room for him when life is good and when life is hard. When we are tempted to do what we know in our hearts is wrong, when we fall, when we fail, and when no one else around us makes room for him. Even if there had been an innkeeper on that first Christmas, we should not be too hard on him. After all, he didn't realize he was turning away the Son of God. I mean, who would have realized, who would have guessed that God would have been revealed in such humble and lowly circumstances? This innkeeper, if he had existed, would have had no clue as to the significance of what was about to happen. He would have been totally unaware that in turning away a poor couple from Nazareth, he was turning away the Christ, the Son of God. But that is the mistake we make every day, not just at Christmas time. We fail to realize that the extraordinary is always present in the ordinary, which is why the grown-up Jesus taught us that every time we refuse to share food with the hungry or drink with the thirsty, Every time we pass up an opportunity to visit the sick or clothe the naked or welcome the stranger, we turn away Jesus who said that when you do it not for the least of these, you do it not for me. To make room for Jesus is to say to Jesus what this awkward innkeeper said when he got swept up into the Christmas story. You can have my room. But it's only fair to warn you that when you make room for Jesus, he will fill up the space. And before you know it, Christ will be everywhere you turn. In your waking when the sun is rising, in your resting as the day is ending, and every moment in between.
as the service began tonight, this room was filled with darkness until something dramatic happened. When the Christ candle was lit, the light of Christ filled every dark corner of this space. That is what happens when we make room in our hearts for Jesus. His light dispels the darkness. His presence fills the emptiness. And his glory cannot be contained. His plea to us tonight is to make room in our hearts for him. And his promise to us tonight is that he will make room for us. So let every heart prepare him room. And on this holy night, let us all, in our own awkward and clumsy ways, be the innkeeper who gets so swept up in the Christmas story that we say to Jesus, you can have my room. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, we give you thanks for the promise fulfilled in Jesus Christ that as we make room for him, he makes room for us. That through him, you have come to be with us in this life and that in the life to come, we may be with you. As we partake of this bread and cup, we remember Jesus, his lowly birth, his redemptive life, his inspiring teachings, his transformative ministry, his sacrificial death, his victorious resurrection, and his glorious ascension. On this holy night, we partake of this bread and cup in memory of his first coming and in anticipation of his second coming. Cleanse our hearts and minds as we share in this holy meal and enable us, even now, to make room in our hearts for him. And the praise will be to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
the same Jesus who said, I am the light of the world, turned to his followers and said, you are the light of the world. Tonight we have come to see the light of Christ, and now we leave this place to be the light of Christ wherever we go.
now may the Christ of Christmas fill your hearts with hope, peace, joy, and love this Christmas day and forevermore. Amen. Merry Christmas. Thank you.